the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us begin by praying. Hail Mary, thou art that dawn which was always illumined with divine light, that chosen ark of salvation, free from the common shipwreck of sin, that enclosed garden which was the delight of God. Hail Mary, my dear mother, my light, my comfort, my refuge, and my strength. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, conceive without sin. Grant that I may have no other spirit but thine to know Jesus and his divine will, that I may have no other soul but thine to praise and glorify the Lord, that I may have no other heart but thine to love God with a love as pure and ardent as thine. Amen. In the beginning, before time began, the Blessed Virgin Mary was conformed, body and soul, to the eternal word. This is the mystery of the Immaculate Conception. In the beginning, before time began, the Blessed Virgin Mary was perfectly united to her Son, Thus, the Immaculate Conception. In the beginning before time began, the Eternal Father chose and prepared for His only begotten Son a mother in whom the Son of God would become incarnate. Consider that from all eternity, in the mind of God, the Virgin Mary was united to the Son. How could she not be entirely spotless, all pure, all stainless? From the beginning before time began, Mary is more beautiful than beauty, more lovely than loveliness, more holy than holiness. Why? Because the eternal word is more beautiful than beauty, more lovely than loveliness, and more holy than holiness. And Mary, as the mother of the word made flesh, is conformed to his beauty, loveliness, and holiness. In the eternal thoughts of God, Mary is never apart from her son, thus her Immaculate Conception. The dogma of the Immaculate Conception is that at the first instant of her conception, the Blessed Virgin Mary was preserved, free from the stain, or free from all stain, of original sin, by a singular grace and privilege granted by Almighty God, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind. The phrase, in view of the merits of Christ, tells us that Mary's Immaculate Conception is a consequence of being conformed to Jesus Christ in a spectacular and singular way. Knowing Mary's Immaculate Conception helps us to know the beauty, the loveliness, and the holiness of Jesus Christ. Let us now consider some of the natural aspects in which the marvelous supernatural event of the Immaculate Conception took place. We look to the lives and marriage of St. Joachim and St. Anne, for it was in the sacred womb of St. Anne that the Most Holy Mother of God was conceived without sin. St. Joachim was a native of Nazareth in Galilee. 
His parents, though occupying a humble position in the world, were descendants of the holy King David. At his circumcision, he was given the name of Joachim, which means preparation for the Lord. St. Anne was born in Bethlehem of rich parents who owned many flocks of sheep and herds of cattle. But they regularly gave away to the poor a large part of their possessions and kept very little for themselves. After Anne's birth, they moved to a beautiful country estate at Sepphoris near Nazareth. From her childhood, Anne loved to pray and to think about God. The more she learned about the awaited coming of the Savior, the more ardently did she pray that God might hasten that happy event. One day, Anne happened to be praying fervently to God to give her a husband who would help her to live according to the divine law. And at the very same moment, on another farm near Nazareth, Joachim, an unusually pious middle-aged bachelor, was also praying for God's help in choosing a wife. Although he knew and greatly admired Anne, he was so humble that he did not dare think she would become his wife. It was God's will that this pure couple should unite in marriage and become the parents of Most Holy Mary. The Archangel Gabriel was sent to announce this to each one. Gabriel appeared in visible form to Anne while she was praying and said, quote, The Lord give thee his blessing, servant of God. Continue to pray for the coming of the Redeemer and rejoice in the Lord. It is his will that thou accept Joachim as thy husband. Close quote. Gabriel then went to Joachim and said to him while he slept, quote, Blessed be thou by the Lord, Joachim. Persevere in the practice of justice and perfection. The Lord wants thee to take Anne as thy wife. Take care of her. Esteem her. For she is dear to him. And give thanks to God. Close quote. At the time of their marriage, Anne was 24 years old and Joachim 42. Joachim and Anne served God with great love and fidelity. The most perfect charity and harmony reigned in their home. They had divided their possessions into three parts. The first they devoted exclusively to the honor of God and to the adornment of the temple. The second to the poor. And the third they kept for themselves. Joachim and Anne frequently spoke together about God and the coming of the Redeemer, for which they prayed long and fervently. In his wisdom, Almighty God proceeded to purify them still further by giving them a very heavy cross to bear, a cross which only grew heavier as the years passed. They remained childless. Among the Israelites in those times, this was considered not only the greatest misfortune and disgrace socially, but also a clear indication that the Lord thought such a couple unworthy to contribute toward the coming of the Messiah. And so Joachim and Anne had to suffer increasing contempt and even insults from their neighbors and acquaintances. But they accepted these humiliations with patience and persevered. They continued to pray to God that he might bless their marriage with a child. Joachim and Anne never ceased to implore God with tears, prayers, and fasts to remove this cross from them. But it seemed that they were not heard. They lived through 20 long trying years without a child. Truly a most heavy cross, but born for love of God and fidelity 
to him and really unbeknownst to them, they contributing to gaining from God the immense grace of the Blessed Virgin Mary and also her Immaculate Conception. Finally, one day, when St. Anne was 44 years old and still begging God for a child, the Archangel Gabriel suddenly appeared before her in resplendent human form and declared, Anne, servant of God, the Lord has heard thy petitions. If he delays their fulfillment, it is in order to prepare thee and to give thee much more than thou askest. The Most High has resolved to give thee and Joachim holy and wonderful fruit. For those who pray to him in humble confidence are most agreeable to him. Now he sends me to give thee joyful news. He chooses thee to be the mother of her who is to give birth to the Redeemer of mankind. Thou shalt bring forth a daughter and she shall be called Mary. She shall be blessed among women and filled with the Holy Ghost. I have announced to Joachim that he shall have a holy daughter, but he does not know that she is to be the mother of the Messiah. Therefore guard this secret, and now go to the temple to give thanks to the Lord, and thou shalt meet Joachim at the Golden Gate. Obviously, shortly thereafter, the Immaculate Conception took place. St. John Eudes teaches about the marvelous privileges which flowed from the Immaculate Conception. Two of these privileges are the following. One, at the moment of her conception, Mary was entirely given to God in mind, in heart, in will, in thought, and in all the powers of her soul. She offered and consecrated herself entirely to the glory of His divine majesty. Number two, from the moment of her conception, Mary began to adore, praise, glorify, and love God with all her soul and with all her strength, according to the extent of the grace given her. Since this grace surpassed that of the highest angel or the greatest saint, Mary already in the first moment of her existence adored God more perfectly, praised and glorified Him more worthily, and loved Him more ardently than did the greatest of the saints in the fullness of their grace. These privileges help us to see how magnificent the grace of the Immaculate Conception is. Quoting St. John Eudes, Quote, Eternal thanks be given to thee, O adorable Trinity, for all the favors bestowed upon this incomparable virgin in her marvelous conception. Close quote. And, above all, Mary's immaculate conception reveals the magnificence of of God's grace which comes to us from Jesus the Lord. And remember, dear children, the purpose of God's grace is always to conform us more and more to Christ. Amen. We pray, by thine immaculate conception, O Mary, make my body pure and my soul holy. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Benedict Sede Omnipotentis, Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti Descendat Supervos, et Mane et Semper. Amen. Thank you.